about 1990, I was sentenced to uh, two and a half years. I had to do two and a half years for, for the crime that I committed. And uh, during that time, my mother, she had already been born again, prayed for me and everything, and uh, went to a minimum security uh, facility. And we were allowed to have materials. And uh, that's how I come to know Brother Copeland. She actually had a four tape series, which was called The uh, Blessings of Daniel. And uh, she sent me two out of a four tape series. And uh, those two tapes is where I got to know Brother Copeland. And I listened to those two tapes, listened to those two tapes. Those were the only two tapes that I had. And it changed my life. I began to just receive it and, and think on it and think on it and think on it. And the seed took root. After being released from prison, Gordon met and married Doris, and together they moved to Texas. Although they had changed the course of their lives, tragedy struck. What the devil intended for bad, God turned it for good. Saturday evening, anxious thing just to get to the house, and, and the thing is, is on me as far as be, trying to beat the train. I've done it a few times, and you figure you do it a few times, you know, you're going to try it again. and. Uh, and she actually said to me when we was driving, she was like, uh, gee, isn't that against the law? Oh, I can't stop now, I'm thinking. So I said, let me just go ahead and just try to get across there. And again, just mistimed it. And the train just hit the back of the car. So it was just a matter of, you know, you're not supposed to do it anyway. But trying to beat it, trying to make it across that track instead of just waiting and being patient, just waiting for the thing to go by. The impact caused Doris to hit her head, causing severe damage that placed her in a coma. Gordon believed and prayed that she would have a complete recovery. And after 18 days, Doris woke up. What happened from the accident was that I sustained a TBI, which is a traumatic brain injury. And um, so there were a lot of things that I had to relearn. Um, once I woke up from the coma, I had to relearn how to even stand without assistance. Um, I had to relearn basically everything. Um, so rehab, it was tough, but um, and even though my brain wasn't to the point where I could go and say, okay, I need to sit down and get in the word here. Even though I wasn't there, um, God helped me a lot. Um, he did so many miracles every single day. I was released without any um, walking assistance. I had no cane, no walker, no nothing, and they had never seen that before. So. There were several things that the Lord did that just really, um, it was just an awesome witness to his goodness. I never had that big brother. I was the oldest of the brothers. And uh, the relationship that I built up with him was Jesus, my big brother. And that's what got me through it. It was like, he was my big brother. He's just, he's right there with me. Like, I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. And I was just able to go ahead and minister to her and, and just know that we was going to get through it. I know he was going to raise her up because... I just had an assurance in the knowing that my big brother had that handle for me. Gordon and Doris have experienced the goodness of God in a way that would forever change their lives. But God had more in store for them. After trying for a baby for over 12 years, God blessed them with a son. We have a little boy. His name is Jaden. He's 18 months old. And um, he is just a tremendous blessing. I mean, I can't even tell you. <laughs> it's just a joy when I see him and uh, see him run towards me or just grab him and throw him up in the air. See all these things I never experienced. So now these things I can go ahead and I can experience with him and it's like, it's like wow. Despite trials and tribulations, the Fries have overcome and are winners in Christ Jesus. Uh, I would encourage people to be of good cheer. We see it through the scriptures time and time again. Paul says, rejoice, rejoice. And again, he says, I say rejoice when you're facing diverse trials and temptations. Uh, but that goes back to the place of knowing and having that relationship with him, knowing that he's with you. You know, it's like it's a fixed fight, you know, and you go into a fixed fight, you know, you already know you won. You might try to, you know, you have to go in there and do a little bit, but eventually you come out, you already go into that fight knowing that you won. Jesus already won the fight for us.